Section 23 of The Natural History, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joyce Martin. The Natural History, Volume 1, by Pliny the Elder. Translated by John Bostock and Henry Thomas Riley. Section 23. Book Four, An Account of Countries, Nations, Seas, Towns, Havens, Mountains, Rivers, Distances, and Peoples Who Now Exist or Formerly Existed. Chapter One, Epirus. The third great gulf of Europe begins at the mountains of Acro Seraunia and ends at the Hellespont, embracing an extent of twenty-five hundred miles exclusive of the sea-line of nineteen smaller gulfs. Upon it are Apirus, Acarania, Aetolia, Phocis, Locris, Achaea, Messenia, Laconia, Argolus, Megarius, Attica, Berosia, and again upon the other sea the same Phocis and Locris, Doris, Phatheotis, Thessalia, Magnesia, Macedonia, and Thracia. All the fabulous lore of Greece, as well as the effulgence of her literature, first shone forth upon the banks of this gulf. We shall therefore dwell a little the longer upon it. Apirus, generally so called, begins at the mountains of Acroserunia. The first people that we meet are the Caonis, from whom the Caonia receives its name then the Thesproti, and then the Antigonesis. We then come to the place where Aornos stood with its exhalation so deadly to the feathered race, the Sestrini, the Ferabi, in whose country Mount Pindus is situate, the Cassiope, the Dryopes, the Stelae, the Helopes, the Malosi, in whose territory is the temple of the Dodonian Jupiter, so famous for his oracle and Mount Tamaris, so highly praised by Theopompus, with its hundred springs gushing from its foot. Apirus, properly so called, advances toward Magnesia and Macedonia, having at its back the Dacerete, previously mentioned, a free nation, and after them the Dardani, a savage race. On the left hand, before the Dardani, are extended the Tribali and the nations of Mosia, while in front of them the Medi, and the Densolete join, and next to them the Thracians, who stretch away as far as the Euxine, in such a manner as a rampart raised around the lofty heights of Rodope, and then of Hamus. On the coast of Epirus is the fortress of Shimara, situate upon the Acroceranian range, and below it the spring known as the Royal Waters, then the towns of Medira and Sistria, and Themus, a river of Thesprotia, colony of Buthrotum, and the Ambracian Gulf, so famed in history, which, with an inlet only half a mile in width, receives a vast body of water from the sea, being thirty-seven miles in length and fifteen in width. The river Acheron, which runs through Acherusia, a lake of Thesprotia, flows into it after a course of thirty-six miles. It is considered wonderful for its bridge, one thousand feet in length, by a people who look upon everything as wonderful that belongs to themselves. Upon this gulf is also situate the town of Ambracia. There are also the Alphas and the Aractus rivers of the Molossi, the city of Anactoria, and the place where Pandosia stood. Chapter 2. Acarnania the towns of Acarnania, the ancient name of which was Curatus, are Heraclea, Echinus, and on the coast, Actium, a colony founded by Augustus with its famous temple of Apollo and the free city of Nicopolis. Passing out of the Ambracian Gulf into the Ionian Sea, we come to the coast of Leucadia, with the promontory of Leucate, and then the Gulf and the peninsula of Leucadia, which last was formerly called Noritius. By the exertions of the inhabitants it was once cut off from the mainland, 
but was again joined to it by the vast bodies of sand accumulated through the action of the winds. This spot is called Diorictos, and it's three stadia in length. On the peninsula is the town of Lucas, formerly called Naritas. We next come to Aliza, Stratos, and Argos, surnamed Amphilochian, cities of the Archeranians. The river Achilos flows from the heights of Pindus, and after separating Arcania from Aetolia is fast adding the island of Artima to the mainland by the continual deposits of earth which it brings down its stream. Chapter 3. Aetolia. The peoples of Aetolia are the Athamanes, the Tiamphi, the Ephiri, the Aninsus, the Pirhabi, the Delopes, the Maraises, and the Atraces, in whose territory rises the river Atrax, which flows into the Ionian Sea. Cladon is a city of Aetolia, situated at a distance of seven miles from the sea, and near the banks of the river Avenus. We then come to Mycenae and Mocria, beyond which lie Mounts Calchis and Talfiasus. On the coast again there is the promontory of Antarium, off which is the mouth of the Corinthian Gulf, which flows in and separates Aetola from the Peloponnesus, being less than one mile in width. The promontory which faces it in the opposite side is called Brion. The towns of Aetolia, however, on the Corinthian Gulf, are the Nopactus and the Pylene, and more inland, Peluron and Halcernia. The most famous mountains are Tamaris in the district of Dodona, Crania in Ambracia, Aracinthus in Arcanania, and Acathion, Pytolium, and Mycenaeum in Aetolia. Chapter 4. Locris and Phocis Next to Aetolia are the Locri, surnamed Azulai, a people exempt from tribute. Here is the town of Xanthe, the port of Apollo Phistius, and the Gulf of Crisa. In the interior are the towns of Arginia, Eupalia, Phaistum, and Calamisus. Beyond are the Sohian plains of Phocis, the town of Syra, and the port of Caleon, seven miles from which, in the interior, is situate the free town of Delphi, at the foot of Mount Parnassus, and having the most celebrated oracle of Apollo throughout the whole world. There is the fountain, too, of Castalia, and the river Cepheus, which flows past Delphi, rising in the former city of Lilea. Besides these, there is the town of Crisa, and that of Antasira, with the Bulensus, as also Nalocum, Paria, Amphysia, exempt from all tribute, Tithron, Tritia, Ambrasus, and Rimea, which district has also the name of Deulis. The extremity of the gulf washes one corner of, of Boeotia with its towns of Cephi and Thebes, surnamed the Corsian, in the vicinity of Helicon. The third town of Boeotia in this sea is that of Page, from which point the isthmus of the Peloponnesus projects in the form of a neck. Chapter 5. The Peloponnesus The Peloponnesus, which was formerly called Ipea and Pelagsia, is a peninsula inferior in fame to no land upon the face of the earth. Situate between the two seas, the Aegean and the Ionian, it is in shape like the leaf of a plane tree, in consequence of the angular indentations made in its shores, according to the Isidorus. It is five hundred and sixty-three miles in circumference, and nearly as much again, allowing for the sea-line on the margin of its gulfs. The narrow pass at which it commences is known by the name of the Ishmus. At this spot the two seas, which we have previously mentioned, running from the north and the east, invade the land from opposite sides and swallow up its entire breadth the result being that through these inroads in opposite directions of such vast bodies of water, the sides of the land are eaten away to such an extent that Helas only holds on to the Peloponnesus by the narrow neck, five miles in width, which intervenes. 
The gulfs thus formed, the one on this side, the other on that, are known as the Corinthian and the Saronic Gulfs. The ports of Lichai on the one side and the Sancherai on the other form the frontiers of this narrow passage, which thus compels to a tedious and perilous circumnavigation such vessels as from their magnitude cannot be carried across by land on vehicles. For this reason it is that both King Demetrius, Caesar the Dictator, the Prince of Caius, and Domitius Nero have at different times made the attempt to cut through this neck by forming a navigable channel, a profane design, as may be clearly seen by the result in every one of these instances. Upon the middle of this intervening neck, which we have called the Ishmus, stands the colony of Corinth, formerly known by the name of Ephri, situate upon the brow of a hill, at a distance of sixty stadia from the shore of either sea. From the heights of its citadel, which is called Acrocorinthos, or the heights of Corinth, and in which is the fountain of Parine, it looks down upon the two seas which lie in the opposite directions. From Leucas to Patre upon the Corinthian Gulf is a distance of eighty-eight miles. The colony of Patre is founded upon the most extensive promontory of the Peloponnesus, facing Etola and the river Ebenus, and the Corinthian Gulf, being, as we have previously stated, less than a mile in width at the entrance there though extending in length as far as the Isthmus, a distance of eighty-five miles. CHAPTER six. Achaia The province called Achaia begins at the Isthmus, from the circumstance of its cities being ranged in regular succession on its coast, it formerly had the name of Aiglos. The first place there is Lichai, already mentioned, a port of the Corinthians next to which is Olros, a fortress of the people of Pelin, then the former towns of Halis and Bura, and the places in which their inhabitants took refuge after their towns had been swallowed up by the sea Sikon, namely Egira, Egium, and Erios. In the interior are Selunai and Hesiae, then come the port of Panormus and Rium already mentioned, from which promontory, promontory of Petri, of which we have previously spoken, is distant five miles, and then the place where Phiri stood. Of the nine mountains of Achaea, Seosia is the most famous. There is also the fountain of Simothi. Beyond Patri we find the town of Olinum, the colony of Dime, places where Bufrasium and Herimine once stood, the Araxus, the Bay of Selene, and the promontory of Chelontes, at five miles' distance from Silene. There is also the fortress of Phileus, the district around which was called Homer Arathira, and after this time Asopis. The territory of the Aleans then begins, who were formerly called Epi, with the city of Elis in the interior, and at a distance of twelve miles from Phileus, being also in the interior the temple of Olympian Jupiter, whom, by the universal celebrity of its games, gives to Greece its mode of reckoning. Here, too, once stood the town of Pisa, the river Alpheus flowing past it. On the coast there is the promontory of Icphes. The river of Alpheus is navigable six miles nearly as far as the towns of Alon and Leprion. We next come to the promontory of Platonodes. All these localities lie to the west. CHAPTER Seven, MESSENIA Further south is the Gulf of Cyparesis, with the city of Cyparesia on its shores, the line of which is seventy-two miles in length. Then the towns of Pylos and Methone, the place where Helos stood, the promontory of Acretius, the Asinian Gulf, which takes its name from the town of Asine, and the Coronian, so called from Corona, which gulfs terminate at the promontory of Tenerum. These are all in the country of Messenia, which has eighteen mountains and the river Pamesis also. In the interior are Messina, Ithome, Ecalia, Arine, Telion, Thyron, Dorion, and Zancle, all of them known to fame at different periods 
The margin of this gulf measures eighty miles, the distance across being thirty. Chapter 8. Laconia At Ternerum begins the territory of Laconia, inhabited by a free nation, and situate on a gulf of one hundred and six miles in circuit and thirty-eight across. The towns are Tenarum, Amiclai, Ferai, and Lucretia, and in the interior Sparta, Theramene, and the spots where Carmile, Pitane, and Anthea formerly stood, the former site of Theria and Gerania. Here is also Mount Tegetus, the river Eurotus, the Gulf of Ilodes, the town of Samantus, the Gulf of Gythium, so called from the town of that name, from which place the passage is the safest across to the island of Crete. All these places are bounded by the promontory of Melia. Chapter 9. Argolis The next gulf, which extends as far as Solium, is called the Argolic Gulf, being fifty miles across and one hundred and sixty-two in circuit. The towns upon it are Boia, Epidaurus, surnamed Lymira, Zarax, and the port of Sipanta. The rivers are the Inacus and the Ericinus, between which lies Argos, surnamed Hippium, situate beyond the place called Lyrna and at a distance of two miles from the sea. Nine miles further is Mycenae, and the place where, it is said, Tyreus stood, the site, too, of Mantinia. The mountains are Artemis, Episantus, Asterion, Porparus, and some others eleven in number. The fountains are those of Niobe, Amimon, and Samante. From Scelium to the Isthmus of Corinth is a distance of 177 miles. We find here the towns of Hermone, Troezen, Corfasium, and Argos, sometimes called Inachian, sometimes Dipsian Argos. Then comes the port of Shinotes and the Saronic Gulf, which was formerly encircled with a grove of oaks, from which it derives its present name, oaks in ancient Greece, having been so called. Upon this gulf is the town of Epidaurus, famous for its temple of Escopolis, the promontory of Spirium, the port of Anthedus, Bucephalus, and then Canchirae, previously mentioned, on the side of the Isthmus, with its temple of Neptune, famous for the games celebrated there every five years. So many are the gulfs which penetrate the shores of the Peloponnesus, so many the seas which howl around it. Invaded by the Ionian on the north, it is beaten by the Sicilian on the west, buffeted by the Cretan on the south, by the Aegean on the southeast, and by the Martoan in the northeast which last sea begins at the Gulf of Megara and washes all the coast of Attica. Chapter 10. Arcadia. Its interior is occupied for the greater part by Arcadia, which remote from the sea on every side was originally called Drymodes, and at a later period Palaxis. The cities of Arcadia are Sophias, Mantilla, Stamphalus, Tegia, and Tagonia, Orchomenus, Phanium, Palatium, from which the Palatium at Rome derives its name, Megalopolis, Gortina, Boculium, Carnion, Paresia, Thepusa, Malinae, Herea, Piliae, Palien, Agre, Epium, Cyanthe, Leprion of Arcadia, Parthenium, Parthenium, Alia, Methridrium, Enispe, Masistum, Lampia, Clitorium, and Clinae, between which two last towns is the district of Nemea, commonly known as Bembinadia. The mountains of Arcadia are Felo, with a town of the same name, Salene, Lysias, upon which is the temple of Lycian Jupiter, Menelus, Artemisus, Parthenius, Lampius, Nonacreus, besides eight others of no note. The rivers are the Ladon, which rises in the marshes of Phanus, and the Ermantheus, which springs from a mountain of the same name and flows into the Alpheus. The other cities of Achaea worthy of mention are those of the Alpharei, the Abetai, the Pagensus, Paroretai, the Pargenitai, the Tortuni, 
the Taipani, the Thyrisi, and the Tritionses. Domitius Nero, the emperor, granted liberty to the whole of Acacia. The Peloponnesus, from the promontory of Mela to the town of Aegeum on the Corinthian Gulf, is 190 miles in length and 125 miles across from Elis to Epidaurus, the distance being from Olympia to Argos, through Arcadia 68 miles. The distance from Olympia to Phylus has been already mentioned, Throughout the whole of this region, as though nature had been desirous to compensate for the inroads of the sea, seventy-six mountains raised their lofty heads. End of section 23. Recording by Joyce Martin. Section 24 of The Natural History, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joyce Martin. The Natural History, Volume 1, by Pliny the Elder, translated by John Bostock and Henry Thomas Riley, Section 24. Chapter 11, Attica. At the narrow neck of the Isthmus, Hellas begins, by our people known as Gracia. The first state that presents itself is Attica, anciently called Acte. It touches the Isthmus in that part of it which is called Megaris, from the colony of Megara, lying on the opposite side to Page. These two towns are situate at the spot where the Peloponnesus projects to the greatest distance being placed one on each side upon the very shoulders of hellas as it were the pagans as well as the people of agosthena belong to the jurisdiction of megara on the coast there is the port of solchenos the town of Sidus, and crimion the scaronian rock six miles in length geronia megara and lucius Eno and Probalinthos also formerly existed here. The ports of Piraeus and Phalarum are distant from the Isthmus fifty-five miles, being united to Athens, which lies in the interior by a wall five miles in length. Athens is a free city and needs not a word more from us in its commendation. Of fame it enjoys even more than enough. In Attica there are the fountains of Sophesia, Larin, Calirho, Anacrunos, and the mountains of Brilisus, Aegilus, Icarius, Hymentus, Lycabetus, and the place where Elisus stood. At the distance of forty-five miles from the Piraeus is the promontory of Sunium. There is also the promontory of Thoricos, Potamos, Steria, and Buron, once towns, the borough of Romnus, the place where Marathon stood, and Thriasian Plain, the town of Malite, and Oropus upon the confines of Boeotia. Chapter 12. Boeotia. In this country are Anthedon, Ochiestus, the free town of Thespi, Labade, and then Thebes, surnamed Boeotian, which does not yield the palm to Athens, even in celebrity. The native land, according to the common notion of the two divinities Liber and Hercules. The birthplace of the Muses, too, is pointed out in the grove of Helicon. To this same Thebes also belong the forest of Citheron and the river Ishmenus. Besides these, there are in Barotia the fountains of Etopia, Samante, Derce, Epicrane, Arethusa, Hippocrene, Aganipi and Gargafi, and besides the mountains already mentioned, Mycelosis, Hydalius, and Acontus. The remaining towns between Megara and Thebes are Lutherae, Heliartus, Plataei, Phorae, Asplendon, Hyli, Thisbe, Erthrae, Galisas, and Copai, near the river Cephesus, Laramina and Ancoa, as also Medion, Figon, Arasipia, Corona, and Charonia. On the coast and below Thebes are Osala, Helion, Skolos, Shonos, Pation, 
hyri myclasios arision talion oloros and tangra the people of which are free and situate upon the very mouth of the euripus a strait formed by the opposite island of euboea all east so famous for its capacious harbour the boeotians formerly had the name of hyantes after then come the locrians surnamed epinamidi formerly called laliges through whose country the river cephesus passes in its course to the sea their towns are opus from which the opuntian gulf takes its name and sinos daphnus is the only town of phoci situate on the coast in the interior of locris is elecha and on the banks of cephesus as we have previously stated lilia and facing delphi nemeus and hyampolis again upon the coast of locrians are limina and theronium near which last the river bogaris enters the sea also the towns of narician alope and sarphia and then the gulf which receives the name of the maliac from the people who dwell there and upon which are the towns of halcyon Acunia, and phalara chapter thirteen doris Doris comes next, in which are Sphercios, Arenion, Boion, Pindus, and Cytunum. Behind Doris lies Mount Etna. Chapter 14. Phthiotus. Hermonia follows, a country which has often changed its name, having been successively called Pelagis Agaros, Hellas, Thessalae, and Dryopis, always taking its surname from its kings in this country were born the king whose name was gracius and from whom gracia was so called and here too was born helen from whom the hellens derived their name the same people homer has called by three different names Myrmenodes, helenes and achai that portion of these people which inhabit the country adjacent to doris are called phytheote their towns are echinus at the mouth of the river spercius and at four miles from the narrow pass of Thermopylae, Herculea, which from it takes its surname Trachin, here too is Mount Calidromus, and the celebrated towns of Hellas, Halos, Lamia, Phisia, and Arne. Chapter 15. Thessalae Proper In Thessalae is Orchomenus, formerly called the Minion, and the towns of Almon, by some called Salmon, Atrax and Pelina, the fountain of Hyperia, the towns also of Phiri, at the back of which is Piera, extending to Macedonia, Larissa, Gomphi, Thebes of Thessaly, the grove of Telon, the gulf of Pagasea, the town of Pagasa, which was afterwards called Demetrius, the plains of Pharisalia, with a free city of similar name, Cranon and Alicia. The mountains of Philothes are Nymphaeus, once so beautiful for its garden scenery, the work of nature, Busigunus, Donasia, Burmis, Daphusa, Chimerion, Athamas, and Stephani. In Thessaly there are thirty-four, of which the most famous are Circeti, Olympus, Pyrrhus, and Ossa, opposite to which last are Plindus and Othris, the abodes of the Lapithi. These mountains look toward the west, Pelion toward the east, all of them forming a curve like an amphitheater, in the interior of which, lying before them, are no less than seventy-five cities. The rivers of Thessalae are the Apidanus, the Phoenix, the Andipus, the Anaconus, and the Pamisus. There is also the fountain of Macias and the lake of Bobias. The river Pinus, too superior to all others in celebrity, takes its rise near Gomphi and flows down a well-wooded valley between Ossa and Olympus, a distance of five hundred stadia being navigable half that distance. The vale, for a distance of five miles through which this river runs, is called by the name of Tempe, being a jugurum and a half nearly in breadth, while on the right and left the mountain chain slopes away with a gentle elevation beyond the range of human vision, the foliage imparting its color to the light within. Along this vale glides a pinus, reflecting the green tints as it rolls along its pebbly bed, 
its banks covered with tufts of verdant herbage and enlivened by the melodious warblings of the birds the penis receives the river orcus or rather i should say does not receive it but merely carries its waters which swarm on its surface like oil as homer says and then after a short time rejects them refusing to allow the waters of a river devoted to penile sufferings and engendered for the furies to mingle with its silvery streams chapter sixteen magnesia to thessalate magnesia joins in which is the fountain of libethra its towns are ilocos hermonium pyra metone and olizon the promontory of cepheus is here situate we then come to the towns of castina and spalathra the promontory of atium the towns of meliboa rhizus and urmane the mouth of the pinus towns of homolium orthe thespi philana thalumisi gratun cranon acarne doltion melitia Phyles and Paltni. The length of Aperus, Achaea, Attica, and Thessaly is said altogether to amount to four hundred and ninety miles. The breadth is two hundred and eighty seven. Chapter seventeen Macedonia. Macedonia comes next, including one hundred and fifty nations, and renowned for its two kings and its former empire over the world it was formerly known by the name of emanthia stretching away toward the nations of epirus on the west it lies at the back of magnesia and thessaly being itself exposed to the attacks of the dardani paeonia and pelagonia protect its northern parts from the tribali its towns are agai at which place its kings were usually buried berea and in the country called paira from the grove of that name aginium upon the coast are heraclea the river apilas and the towns of padina aloros and the river haliasmon in the interior are the alarite the valenai the phalisai the cyrahestai and the tiresii the colony of pela the stobi a town with the rights of roman citizens next comes antigonia europus upon the river axius and another place of the same name by which the rhodius flows scadira eudoria mysia and gordini then upon the coast ichni and the river axius along this frontier the dardani the triris and the pairis border on macedonia leaving this river there are the nations of paeonia the paori the erodenses the amampi pelagontes and the migdones next come the mountains of rhodope scopius and orbius and lying along the extent of country in front of these mountains the arethusi the antiochenesus the idomensus the dobri the estriensus the alentensus the alderistensus the morili the gareski the lincesti the othroni and the amantini and oreste both of them free peoples the colonies of bulis and dium the xylopotai the scotusesi a free people herlaclea cynthia the timphai and teroni upon the coast of the macedonian gulf there are the towns of shalastra and more inland philoros and Lete, and at the extreme bend of the gulf thessalonica a free city from this place to derhachium it is two hundred and forty-five miles and then thermi upon the gulf of thermi are the towns of dicea pydnia dera scione the promontory of canisterum and the towns of paline and flegra in this region also are the mountains hypsisoris epitus halcyone and limone the towns of nesosis for Exlon, Mendai, and what was formerly called Tidira on the Isthmus of Palene, but now the colony of Cassandria, Arnthimus, Alophyxus, and the Gulf of Messiberna, the towns of Messella, Ampelos, Torone, Signos, and the canal a mile and a half in length, by means of which Xerxes, king of the Persians, cut off Mount Athos from the mainland. 
this mountain projects from the level plain of the adjacent country into the sea a distance of seventy-five miles its circumference at its base being one hundred and fifty miles in extent there was formerly upon its summit the town of ecrothion the present towns are uranopolis palaeorium thysus Salonai, and apollonia the inhabitants of which have the surname of macrobi the town also of Sacera, and then the other side of the isthmus after which come acanthus stiagrio Sithone, Heraclea, and the country of Magdonia that lies below, in which are situate, at some distance from the sea, Apollonia and Arethusa. Again, upon the coast, we have Posidium, and the bay with the town of Sermoros, Amphipolis, a free town, and the nation of Bistalte. We then come to the river Strymon, which takes its rise in Mount Hamus and forms the boundary of macedonia it is worthy of remark that it first discharges itself into seven lakes before it proceeds onward in its course such is macedonia which was once the mistress of the world which once extended her career over asia armenthia iberia albania cappadocia syria egypt taurus and caucasus which reduced the whole of the east under her power and triumphed over the Bactri, the Medes, and the Persians. She, too, it was who proved the conqueror of India, thus treading on the footsteps of Father Liber and of Hercules. And this is the same Macedonia of which our own general Paulus Emilius sold to pillage seventy-two cities in one day, so great the difference in her lot resulting from the actions of two individuals. Chapter 18. Thrace, the Aegean Sea. Thrace now follows, divided into fifty strategies, and to be reckoned among the most powerful nations of Europe. Among its peoples whom we ought not to admit to name are the Deslente and the Medi, dwelling upon the right bank of the Strymon and joining up to the Bisalte, above mentioned. On the left there are the Degeri, and a number of tribes of the Basai, with various names, as far as the river Mestas, which winds around the foot of Mount Pegeum, passing among the Lethi, the Diobisi, the Carbalisi, and then the Brysi, the Safai, and the Odomanti. The territory of the Odrasi gives birth to the Hebrews, its banks being inhabited by the Kableti, and the Pyrogeri, the Drugeri, the Kynesi, the Beni, the Corpili, the Baltii, and the Idoni. In the same district are also the Staletai, the Perantai, the Delonci, the Thyni, and the Greater Collecti, the Hypsalti, below Mount Hermes, the lesser at the foot of Rhodrop. Between these tribes runs the river Hebrus. We then come to a town at the foot of Rhodrop, first called Poneropolis, afterwards Philippopolis, from the name of its founder, and now from the peculiarity of its situation, Trimontium. To reach the summit of Hemus, you have to travel six miles. The sides of it that look in the opposite direction and slope toward the Easter are inhabited by the Mosi, the Gaetai, the Aorsi, the Godai, and the Clarii. Below them are the Arii, Sermante, also called Ariatai, and Scythians, and about the shores of the Euxene, the Morissini and the Scythoni, the forefathers of the poet Orpheus, dwell. Thus is Thrance bounded by the Easter on the north, by the Euxene and the Propontis on the east, and the Aegean Sea on the south, on the coast of which, after leaving the Strymon, we come in turn to Apollonia, Ismia, Neapolis, and Datos. In the interior is the colony of Philippi, distant from Darabachium, 325 miles, also Scotusa, the city of Topirius, the mouth of the river Mistus, Mount Pangius, Herculea, Olanthos, Aberda, a free city, the people of the Bistones, and their lake. Here was formerly the city of Terida, which struck such terror with its stables of the horses of Diomedes. At the present day we find here Dicea, Ismeron, the place where Parthonian stood, Felicia, and Moronia, formerly called Orthogoria. 
we then come to mount cerium and zone and then the place called doriscus capable of containing ten thousand men for it was in bodies of ten thousand that xerxes here numbered his army we then come to the mouth of the hebrus the port of stentor and the free town of enos with the tomb there of Polydorus, the region formerly of the Sisones. From Dorisus there is a winding coast as far as Maserun Tychos, or the Long Wall, a distance of 122 miles. Round Dorisus flows the river Malaeus, from which the Gulf of Malaeus receives its name. The towns are Sipsela, Bisante and Macron Tychos, already mentioned, so called because a wall extends from the spot between the two seas, that is to say, from the Propontius to the Gulf of Milas, thus excluding the Chersonesus which projects beyond it. The other side of Thrace now begins, on the coast of the Euxine, where river Ishtar discharges itself, and it is in this quarter, perhaps, that Thrace possesses the finest cities histropolis namely founded by the milesians tomi and calatus formerly called Aserventes. it also had the cities of herculea and Bizone, which later was swallowed up by an earthquake it now has dionysopolis formerly called cruni which is washed by the river zyrus all this country was formerly possessed by the scythians surnamed erodorus their towns were aphrodiasis Lebistos, Zagere, Rokobe, Eumenia, Parthenopolis, and Gerania, where a nation of pygmies is said to have dwelt. The barbarians used to call them Catuzi and entertain a belief that they were put to flight by cranes. Upon the coast, proceeding from Dionysopolis, is Odysseus, a city of the Milesians, the river Pansius, and the town of Tetranolacius. Mount Hymus, which with its vast chain overhangs the Euxine, had in former times upon its summit the town of Aristium. At the present day there are upon the coast Mesembria and Anchialium, where the Mesa formerly stood. The region of Astis formerly had a town called Anthium. At the present day Apollonia occupies its site. The rivers here are the Panisos, the Riras, the Terus, and the Orosines. There are also the towns of Thynius, Palmadesos, the Velton, with its lake now known as Dultium, a colony of veterans, and Phinopolis, near which last is the Bosphorus. From the mouth of the Ister to the entrance of the Euxine, some writers have made to be a distance of 555 miles. Agrippa, however, increases the length by 60 miles. The distance, then, to Macaroon Thycos, or the Long Wall previously mentioned, is 150 miles, and from it to the extremity of the Cessornusis, 126. On leaving the Bosporus, we come to the Gulf of Sestinus, and two harbors, the one called the Old Men's Haven, and the other the Woman's Haven. Next comes the promontory of Cherasoceros, upon which is the town of Byzantium, a free state, formerly called Lygos, distant from Dorachium seven hundred and eleven miles, so great being the space of land that intervenes between the Adriatic Sea and the Propontis. We next come to the rivers Bathanius and Padreus, or Atherus, and the towns of Salimbria and Parinthus, which join the mainland by a neck of only two hundred feet in width. In the interior are Bysia, a citadel of the kings of Thrace, and hated by the swallows, in consequence of the sacrilegious crime of Turius, the district called Senatia, and the colony of Flaviopolis, where formerly stood a town called Cala. Then, at a distance of fifty miles from Bazia, we come to the colony of Apros, distant from Philippi, 180 miles. Upon the coast is the river Erginus. Here formerly stood the town of Ganos, and Lysimachia in the Chersonesus is being now gradually deserted. At this spot there is another Ishmus, similar in name to the other, and of about equal width, and in a manner by no means dissimilar. 
two cities formerly stood on the shore one by either side pactai on the side of the propontis and cardia on the side of the gulf of melas the latter deriving its name from the shape which the land assumes these however were afterwards united with lysimachia which stands at a distance of five miles from macrunticos the chersonesus formerly had on the side of the propontis the towns of tiristasis crithotes and sicia on the banks of the river agos it now has at a distance of twenty-two miles from the colony of apros resistos which stands opposite to the colony of parium the health spot also which separates as we have already stated europe from asia by a channel seven stadia in width has four cities facing each other calipolis and sestos in europe and lampsanchus and abdios in asia on the chersonesus there is the promontory of mastusia lying opposite to segum and on one side of it stands the sinosima for so the tomb of hecuba is called the naval station of the achaeans and the tower and near it the shrine of protesialus on the extreme front of the chernosius which is called eloium there is a city of eleus advancing thence toward the gulf of melas we have the port of colos panormus and then cardia previously mentioned in this manner is the third great gulf of europe bounded the mountains of thrace besides those already mentioned are idonus gigamoros maritos and malamphilos the rivers are the bargos and the skurmus which fell into the hebrews the length of macedonia thrace and the hellespont have been already mentioned some writers however make it seven hundred and twenty miles the breadth being three hundred and eighty four what may be called a rock rather than an island lying between tinos and chios has given its name to the aegean sea it has the name of x from its strong resemblance to a goat which is so called in greek and shoots precipitately from out of the middle of the sea those who are sailing toward the isle of andros from achaia see the rock on the left boding no good and warning them of its dangers part of the aegean sea bears the name of myrotan being so called from the small island of myrotus which is seen as you sail toward macedonia from geristus not far from karstus in euboa the romans include all these seas under two names the macedonian in whose parts where it touches the coasts of macedonia or thrace and the grecian where it washes the shores of greece the greeks however divide the ionian sea into the sicilian and the cretan seas after the name of those islands and they give the name of icarian to that part which lies between samos and myconos the gulfs which we have already mentioned have given to these seas the rest of their names such then are the seas and the various nations which are comprehended in the third great gulf of europe end of section twenty four recording by joyce martin section twenty five of the natural history volume one this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joyce Martin The Natural History, Volume 1, by Pliny the Elder Translated by John Bostock and Henry Thomas Riley Section 25 Chapter 19 the islands which lie before the lands already mentioned lying opposite to thesprotia at a distance of twelve miles from buthrotus and fifty from acroserunia is the island of corsira with a city of the same name the citizens of which are free also a town called cassiope and a temple dedicated to jupiter cassius this island is ninety-seven miles in length and in Homer has the names of Schleria and Phaeacia, while Callimachus calls it Drepane. There are some other islands around it, such as Theronos, lying in the direction of Italy, and the two islands of Paxos, 
in that of Lucadia, both of them five miles distant from Corsira. Not far from these, and in front of Corsira, are Ericusa, Marante, Elafusa, Malthes, Trachi, Pythionia, Pycia, Tarichai, and of Falacrum, the promontory of Corcrea, the rock into which, according to the story which arises no doubt from the similarity of appearance, the ship of Ulysses was changed. Before Lucimia we find the islands of Cybota, and between Leucadia and Achia a great number of islands, among which are those called Talabodes and also Tafai. By the natives, those which lie before Leucadia are called by the names of Tafias, Oxai, and Prinoessa, while those that are in front of Aetolia are the Echinades, consisting of Aegialia, Cotonus, Thyteria, Geoaris, Dionysia, Cernes, Chalcis, Pinara, and Maestus. In front of these, and lying out at sea, are Cephalenia and Zycathus, both of them free, Ithaca, Dolichium, Same, and Crosali. Cephalina, formerly known as Malena, lies at a distance of eleven miles from Paxos and is ninety-three miles in circumference. Its city of Same has been leveled to the ground by the Romans, but it still possesses three others. Between this island and Acacia lies the island of Zacathus, remarkable for its city of the same name and for its singular fertility. It formerly had the name of Hyri and lies to the south of Cephalina, at a distance of twenty-five miles. In it there is the famous mountain of Letus. This island is thirty-six miles in circumference. At a distance of fifteen miles from Zycathus is Ithaca, in which is Mount Neritus. Its circumference in all is twenty-five miles. Twelve miles distance from this island is Araxis, a promontory of the Peloponnesus. Before Ithaca, lying out in the main sea, are Asteris and Prote, and before Zacanthus is a distance of thirty-five miles in the direction of the southeast wind, are the two Strophades, by some known as the Plote. Before Cephalina lies Latoya, before Pylos the three Cephage, and before Messini the Onuse, as many in number. In the Asinian Gulf there are the three Tharides, and in that of Laconia Thiganusa, Colthon, and Sarithra, with the town of that name, the former name of which island was Porphyrus. It is situate five miles from the promontory of Malaya, thus forming a strait very dangerous to navigation. In the Gulf of Argolis are Pitrusa, Hyrene, and Iphire. Opposite the territory of Hermione, Tiparanus, Aperopia, Colonus, and Aristra, and opposite that of Trozen, Caluria, and at the distance of half a mile, Plates. Belbina, Lacina, and Balsidius. Opposite Epidorus is Cicrophalos and Petronosus, six miles distant from the mainland, and at a distance of fifteen miles from this last Aegea, a free island, the length of which, as you sail past it, is eighteen miles. This island is twenty miles distant from Piraeus, the port of Athens. It is formerly to be called Enoni. Opposite the promontory of Spiraeum lie Elusa, Adendros, the two islands called Kraugai, the two Sessai, Selachusa, Senchiris, and Aspis, as also in the Gulf of Megara, the four Methrudes. Aegila lies at a distance of fifteen miles from Cythera, and of twenty-five from Phalasarna, a city of Crete. Chapter 20. Crete. Crete itself lies from east to west, the one side facing the south, the other the north, and is known to fame by the renown of its hundred cities. Docetus says that it took its name from the nymph Crete, the daughter of Hesperides. Anaximander from a king of the Curates, Philistides of Malus. 
while crates say that it was at first called area and after that caritis and some have been of the opinion that it had the name of masirun from the serenity of its climate in breadth it nowhere exceeds fifty miles being widest about the middle in length however it is full two hundred and seventy miles and five hundred and eighty nine in circumference forming a bend toward the cretian sea which takes its name from it at its eastern extremity is the promontory of Semonium, facing Rhodes, while toward the west it throws out that of Creumetapon in the direction of Serene. The more remarkable cities of Crete are Phalasarna, Hetea, Sisamon, Pergamum, Sidonia, Minoium, Apteron, Pantometrium, Amphimala, Rithamina, Panormus, Caetium, Apollonia, Matium, Herculia, Melitos, and Palos, Hierapitna, Labina, and Hierapolis, and in the interior Gortina, Feastium, Gnosus, Polyrenium, Marina, Lycastus, Gramnus, Lictus, Dium, Asus, Pyloros, Rytion, Alachos, Ferrari, Holopyxos, Lassos, Euthernae, Theropnae, Marathusa, and Talisos, besides some sixty others of which the memory only exists. The mountains are those of Cadistus, Ida, Dictinaeus, and Coricus. This island is distant at its promontory of Crimuntopon, according to Agrippa, from Ficus, the promontory of Cyrene, 125 miles, and at Cadistus, from Malia to the Peloponnesus, 80. From the island of Carpathos at its promontory of Simonium, it lies in a westerly direction at a distance of 60 miles. This last-named island is situate between it and Rhodes. The other islands in its vicinity and lying in front of the Peloponnesus are two islands known as Corsii and the two called Mylae, on the north side having Crete on the right and opposite to Cardonia is Luce, and the two islands known as Burdro. Opposite to Matium lies Dia, opposite to the promontory of Itanium, Onesia, and Luce, over against Hirapitna, Crisa, and Gados. In the same neighborhood also are the Ophiusa, Butoa, and Aredus, and after doubling Crimitopon, we come to the three islands known as Musagoros. Before the promontory of Simonium lie the islands of Phoque, the Plate, the Cernides, Nulocos, Armendon, and Zephyre. Belonging to Hellas, but still in the Aegean Sea, we have the Licardes, consisting of Scarfia, Corissa, Focaria, and many others which face Attica but have no towns upon them, and are consequently of little note. Opposite Eleusis, however, is the far-famed Salamis. Before it, Citalia, and, at a distance of five miles from Sunium, the island of Helene. At the same distance from this last is Sios, which some of our countrymen have called Sia, and the Greeks Hydrusa, an island which has been torn away from Euboa. It was formerly five hundred stadia in length, but more recently four-fifths of it in the direction of Boeotia have been swallowed up by the sea. The only towns it now has left are Iulis and Carthea. Corissus and Polisia have perished. Varro informs us that from this place there used to come a cloth of very fine texture used for women's dresses. Chapter 21 Euboea Euboea itself has also been rent away from Botia, the channel of the Euripus, which flows between them, being so narrow as to admit of the opposite shores being united by a bridge. At the south, this island is remarkable for its two promontories, that of Garistus, which looks towards Attica, and that of Cepherus, which faces toward the Hellespont. On the north it has that of Sinaeum, in no part does this island extend to a greater breadth than forty miles, while it never contracts to less than two. In length it runs along the whole coast of Botia, extending from Attica as far as Thessalae, 
a distance of a hundred and fifty miles. In circumference it measures 365 and is distant from the Hellespont on the side of Sepphoris, 225 miles. The cities for which it was formerly famous were Pyra, Portmos, Nisos, Sorinthos, Orinum, Dium, Aedipsos, Oca, and Echalia. At present it is ennobled by those of Calchis, opposite which on the mainland is Aulis. Gerastus, Aricia, Caristus, Oritanum, Artemisium. Here are also the fountain of Arthusa, the river Lelantus, and the warm springs known as Elopi. It is still better known, however, for the marble of Caristus. This island used formerly to be called Calicondotus and Macris, as we learn from Dionysus and Euphorus. According to Aristides, Macrea also, as Callidemus says, Calchus, because copper was first discovered there. Menechmus says that it was called Abantius, and the poets generally gave it the name of Aesopus. Chapter 22. The Cyclades. Beyond Euboa and out in the Marotian Sea are numerous other islands, but those more especially famous are Glauconosus and the Aegilia. Off the promontory, too, of Gerenstus are the Cyclades, lying in a circle around Delos, from which circumstance they derive their name. The first of them is the one called Andros, with a city of the same name, distant from Gerastus ten miles and from Sios thirty-nine. Marisalus tells us that this island was at first called Coros, and after that Antandros. Callimachus calls it Lacia, and others again Nonagria, Hydrusa, and Epagris. It is ninety-three miles in circumference. At a distance of one mile from Andros and of fifteen from Delos is Tenos, with a city of the same name. This island is fifteen miles at length. Aristotle says that it was formerly called Hydrusa, from the abundance of water found here, while some writers call it Ophiusa. The other islands are Myconos, with the mountain of Demastus, distant from Delos, fifteen miles, Siphnus, formerly called Meropia, and Aces, twenty-eight miles in circumference, Serifus, twelve miles in circuit, Prepestinius, Scythnos, and then by far the most famous among the cyclids, and lying in the very middle of them, Delos itself, so famous for its temple of Apollo and its extensive commerce. This island long floated on the waves, and, as tradition says, was the only one that had never experienced an earthquake down to the time of M. Varro. Mulcanius, however, has informed us that it has been twice so visited. Aristotle states that the island received its name from the fact of its having so suddenly made its appearance on emerging from the sea. Aglasothenes, however, gives it the name of Cynthia and others of Ortygia, Asteria, Lagia, Chlamydia, Synthus, and from the circumstance of fire having been first discovered here, Pyripoli. Its circumference is five miles only. Mount Synthus here raises his head. Next to this island is Rene, which Antiquities calls by the name of Celadusa and Calademus, Artemite, Skyros, which the old writers have stated to be twenty miles in circumference, but Mucenes, a hundred and sixty, Oliaros and Peros, with a city of the same name distant from Delos, thirty-eight miles, and famous for its marble. It was first called Platia, and after that, Minoeus, at a distance of seven miles from this last island, is Naxos, with a town of the same name. It is eighteen miles distant from Delos. This island was formerly called Strongyle, then Dia, and then Dionysia, in consequence of the fruitfulness of its vineyards. Others, again, have called it the Lesser Sicily or Callipolis. It is seventy-five miles in circumference, half as large again as Peros. Chapter 23. The Sporades. The islands thus far are considered as belonging to the cyclids. The rest that follow are the Sporades. These are Helene, Focusia, Nicasia, Sechinusa, 
Folagandros, and at a distance of 38 miles from Naxos, Icaros, which has given its name to the surrounding sea, and is the same number of miles in land, with two cities, and a third now no longer in existence. This island used formerly to be called Delochi, Macaris, and Ichthyosia. It is situate 50 miles to the northeast of Delos, and 35 from the island of Samos. Between Euboa and Andros there is an arm of the sea 10 miles in width, and from Icaros to Geriastus is a distance of 112 and a half miles. After we pass these, no regular order can be well observed. The rest must therefore be mentioned indiscriminately. There is the island of Skyros and that of Ios, 18 miles distance from Naxos, and deserving of all veneration for the tomb there of Homer. It is 25 miles in length, and was formerly known by the name of Phonis, and also Odia, Olatendros, and Gyara, with a city of the same name, the island being 12 miles in circumference, and distant from Andros, 62. At a distance of 80 miles from Gyara to Saronos, then Caiaphas, Talos, noted for its unguents, and by Callimachus, called Agathusa, Donusa, Patmos, 30 miles in circumference, the Coriaci, Labinthus, Leros, Sinara, Skinius, formerly called Enoe Horatia, also called Onus, Cassios, likewise called Astrabi, Simolus, or Echinusa, and Milos, with a city of that name, which island Aristides called Memblis, Aristotle, Zephyria, Callimachus, Mimalis, Heraclides, Cephas, and Octos. This last is the most circular in form of all these islands. After this comes Machia, then Hyper, formerly Patage, or as others have it, Platage, but now called Amorgos, Paliegos, Phile, and Thera, known as Caliste when it first sprang from the waves. From this, at a later period, the island of Theresia was torn away, and between the two afterwards arose Ultima, also called Hera, and Thea, which in our own times came into existence in the vicinity of these islands. Ios is distant from Thera, twenty-five miles. Next to these follow Lea, Ascania, Anathe, Hippurius, and Ostapalia, a free state. This island is 88 miles in circumference and 125 miles distant from Cadistus in Crete. From Astapalia, Palatia is distant 60 miles and Camenia 38 from this last. Then we come to the isles of Azabithia, Lanis, Tregia, Pharmacusa, Tachidia, Chalicia, Kalimna, in which is the town of Cus, Kalimna at a distance of 25 miles from which is Carpathium, which has given its name to the Carpathian Sea. The distance thence to Rhodes in the direction of the southwest wind is 50 miles. From Carpathium to Casus is 7 miles, and from Casus to Simonium, the promontory of Crete, 30. In the Euripus of Euboea, almost at the very mouth of it, are the four islands called Petali and at its outlet at Lante. The Cyclades and the Sporades are bounded on the east by the Asiatic shores of the Icarian Sea, on the west by the Attic shores of the Myrotian Sea, on the north by the Aegean, and on the south by the Cretian and Carpathian Seas, extending 700 miles in length and 200 in breadth. The Gulf of Pegasa has in front of it Euthia, Cynathius, Syros, previously mentioned, and the very furthermost of the Cyclades and Sporades, Gerontia and Scandila, the Gulf of Thermae, Irisia, Solimnia, Eudemnia, and Nia, which last is sacred to Minerva. Athos has before it four islands, Propathus, formerly called Uvanus, with a city of that name, at a distance from Athos of nine miles. Skiathus at a distance of fifteen, and Imbros, with a city of the same name, at a distance of eighty-eight miles. This last island is distant from Mastusia in the Chersonesus, twenty-five miles. 
It is sixty-two miles in circumference and is washed by the river Ilissus. At a distance of twenty-two miles from it is Lemnos, being distant from Mount Athos, eighty-seven. It is one hundred and twelve miles in circumference and has the cities of Hephaestia and Marina, into the marketplace of which last city Athos throws its shadow at the summer solstice. The island of Thasos, consisting of a free state, is six miles distant from Lemnos. It formerly had the name of Acrea or Athria. Abdera, on the mainland, is distant from Thasos, twenty-two miles, Athos, sixty-two. The island of Samothrace, a free state facing the river Hebrus, is the same distance from Thasos, being also thirty-two miles from Imbros, twenty-two from Lemnos, and thirty-eight from the coast of Thrace. It is thirty-two miles in circumference, and in it rises Mount Soes, ten miles in height. This island is the most inaccessible of them all. Callimachus mentions it by its ancient name of Dardania. Between the Chersones and Samothres, at a distance of about fifteen miles from them both, is the island of Halonosus, and beyond it Gethon, Lamponio, and Alipiconosus and not far from Colos, a port of the Chersonosus, besides some others of no importance. The following names may be also mentioned as those of uninhabited islands in this gulf, of which we have been enabled to discover the names Desticos, Sarnos, Cicerios, Carbrusa, Calathusa, Scylia, Draconin, Arinosus, Diethusa, Scapos, Saphiris, Messe, Ancient, Pateronosus, Pateria, Cale, Nerifus, and Polendus. Chapter 24 The Hellespont, the Lake Maotis. The fourth great gulf of Europe begins at the Hellespont and ends at the entrance of the Maotis, but in order that the several portions of the Euxine and its coast may be the better known, we must briefly embrace the form of it in one general view. This vast sea, lying in front of Asia, is shut out from Europe by the projection of the shores of the Chersonesus and effects an entrance into those countries for a narrow channel only, of the width, as already mentioned, of seven stadia, thus separating Europe from Asia. The entrance of these straits is called the Hellespont, over it Xerxes, the king of the Persians, constructed a bridge of boats, across which he led his army. A narrow channel extends thence a distance of eighty-six miles as far as Priapus, a city of Asia, at which Alexander the Great passed over. At this point the sea becomes wider, and after some distance again takes the form of a narrow strait. The wider part is known as the Propontis, the Straits as the Thracian Bosporus, being only half a mile in width, and at the place where Darius, the father of Xerxes, led his troops across by a bridge. The extremity of this is distant from the Hellespont, 239 miles. When we come to the vast sea, called the Euxine, which invades the land as it retreats afar, and the name of which was formerly Oxnus. As the shores bend inwards, this sea with a vast sweep stretches far away, curving on both sides after the manner of a pair of horns, so much so that in shape it bears a distinct resemblance of a Scythian bow. In the middle of the curve it is joined by the mouth of Lake Maotis, which is called the Sumerian Bosphorus, and is two miles and a half in width. Between the two Bosphori, the Thracian and the Sumerian, there is a distance in a straight line of five hundred miles, as Polybius informs us. We learn from Varro and most of the ancient writers that the circumference of the Euxine is altogether two thousand one hundred and fifty miles, but to this number Cornelius Nepos adds three hundred and fifty more, while Artemidorus makes it two thousand nine hundred and nineteen miles. Agrippa, 2,360, and Mucanus, 2,425. In a similar manner, some writers have fixed the length of the European shores of the sea at 1,478 miles, others again at 1,172. 
M. Varro gives the measurement as follows. From the mouth of the Euxine to Apollonia, 187 miles, and to Calatus, the same distance, thence to the mouth of the Ister, 125 miles, to the Boristines, 250, to the Chersonis, a town of Heraculotai, 325, to Pan to Pantacapian, by some called Bosphorus, at the very extremity of the shores of Europe, 212 miles, the whole of which added together makes 1,337 miles. Agrippa makes the distance from Byzantium to the river Ister 560 miles, and from thence to Pantacapium 635. Lake Meotis, which receives the river of Tanis as it flows from the Rifrin Mountains, and forms the extreme boundary between Europe and Asia, is said to be 1,406 miles in circumference, which, however, some writers state at only 1,125. From the entrance of this lake to the mouth of the Titanus is a straight line. It is generally agreed a distance of 375 miles. The inhabitants of the coasts of this fourth great gulf of Europe as far as Astropolis, have been already mentioned in our account of Thrace. Passing beyond that spot, we come to the mouths of the Ister. This river rises in Germany, in the heights of Mount Abnova, opposite to Renercum, the town of Gaul, and flows for a course of many miles beyond the Alps, and through nations innumerable under the name of the Danube, adding immensely to the volume of its waters. At the spot where it first enters Illyricum, it assumes the name of easter and after receiving sixty rivers nearly one half of which are navigable rolls into the exene by six vast channels the first of these is the mouth of pius close to which is the island of pius itself from which the neighboring channel takes its name this mouth is swallowed up in a great swamp nineteen miles in length from the same channel too above istropolis a lake takes its rise sixty-three miles in circuit its name is Hamirus. The second mouth is called Naraku Stoma. The third, which is near the island of Sarmatica, is called Kalon Stoma. The fourth is known as Suda Stoman, with its island called Canopon Diabasis, after which come the Berion Stoma and the Pisilon Stoma. These mouths are each of them so considerable that for a distance of forty miles, it is said the saltiness of the sea is quite overpowered and the water found to be fresh chapter twenty five dicea sarmatia on setting out from this spot all the nations met with are scythian in general though various races have occupied the adjacent shores at one spot the Gaetai by the romans called deci and at another the sarmanta by the greeks called saramante and the Hamaxabi, or Orsi, a branch of them. Then again the base-born Scythians and descendants of slaves, or else the Troglodyte, and after them the Aleni and the Roxolani, the higher parts again between the Danube and the Hercynian forest, as far as the winter quarters of Pannonia at Carnuntium, and the borders of the Germans are occupied by the Samaritan Azages, who inhabit the level country and the plains while the Daci, whom they have driven as far as the river Pathisius, inhabit the mountain and forest ranges. On leaving the river Maris, whether it is that or the Duria that separates them from the Suebi and the kingdom of Vanius, the Bisterni, and after them other tribes of the Germans, occupy the opposite sides. Agrippa considers the whole of this region, from the Ister to the ocean, to be 2,100 miles in length, and 4,400 miles in breadth to the river Vistula in the deserts of Samartia. The name Scythian has extended in every direction, even to the Sarmatai and the Germans, but this ancient appellation is now only given to those who dwell beyond those nations and live unknown to nearly all the rest of the world. End of section 25, recorded by Joyce Martin.
Section 26 of The Natural History, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Natural History, Volume 1, by Pliny the Elder. Translated by John Bostock and Henry Thomas Riley. Section 26. Chapter 26. Scythia. Leaving the Ister, we come to the towns of Kremniscos Apolium, the mountains of Macrocremnus, and the famous river Tyra, which gives name to a town on the spot where Ophiusa is said formerly to have stood. The Tyragete inhabit a large island, situate in this river, which is distant from Pseudostomos, a mouth of the Ister so called, 130 miles. We then come to the Axiacae, who take their name from the river Axiasis, and beyond them the Crobusi, the river Rhodes, the Sagarian Gulf, and the port of Ordezos. At a distance of 120 miles from the Tyra is the river Borosthenes, with a lake and a people of similar name, as also a town in the interior, at a distance of 15 miles from the sea, the ancient names of which were Olbiopolis and Miletopolis. Again on the shore is the port of the Achaei, and the island of Achilles, famous for the tomb there of that hero, and at a distance of 125 miles from it, a peninsula which stretches forth in the shape of a sword, in an oblique direction, and is called, from having been his place of exercise, Dromos Achilleos. The length of this, according to Agrippa, is eighty miles. The Taurian Scythians and the Sarasi occupy all this tract of country. At this spot begins a well-wooded district, which is given to the sea that washes its banks, the name of the Hylaean Sea. Its inhabitants are called Enocadle. Beyond them is the river Panticapis, which separates the Nomades and the Georgi, and after it the Assassinus. Some authors say that the Panticapis flows into the Borosthenes below Olbia. Others, who are more correct, say that it is the Hypanus. So great is the mistake made by those who have placed it in Asia. The sea runs in here and forms a large gulf, until there is only an intervening space of five miles between it and the Lake Maeotis, its margin forming the sea-line of extensive tracts of land and numerous nations. It is known as the Gulf of Carcinites. Here we find the river Pasiris, the towns of Navarum and Carcine, and behind it Lake Buges, which discharges itself by a channel into the sea. This Buges is separated by a ridge of rocks from Coratus, a gulf in the Lake Maeotis. It receives the rivers Buges, Garus, and Hypacarus, which approach it from regions that lie in various directions. For the Garus separates the Basilidae from the Nomades, the Hypacarus flows through the Nomades and the Hylae, by an artificial channel into Lake Buges, and by its natural one into the Gulf of Coratus. This region bears the name of Scythia Sendice. At the river Carcinites, Scythia Torica begins, which was once covered by the sea, where we now see level plains extended on every side. Beyond this the land rises into mountains of great elevation. The peoples here are thirty in number, of which twenty-three dwell in the interior, six of the cities being inhabited by the Orgosini, the Caraceni, the Lagarani, the Tractari, the Arsilakite, and the Caliordi. The Scythatori possess the range of mountains. On the west they are bounded by the Chersonesus, and on the east by the Scythian Satarche. On the shore, after we leave Carcinites, we find the following towns. Tafre, situate on the very isthmus of the peninsula, and then Heraclea Chersonesus, to which its freedom has been granted by the Romans. This place was formerly called Megarice, being the most polished city throughout all these regions, in consequence of its strict preservation of Grecian manners and customs. A wall five miles in length surrounds it. Next to this comes the promontory of Parthenium, the city of the Tauri, Placia, the port of the Symboli, 
and the promontory of Creomatopon, opposite to Carambis, a promontory of Asia, which runs out in the middle of the Euxine, leaving an intervening space between them of 170 miles, which circumstance it is in especial that gives it to the sea the form of a Scythian bow. After leaving this headland, we come to a great number of harbors and lakes of the Torre. The town of Theodosia is distant from Creomatopon 125 miles, and from Kerosinesis 165. Beyond it there were, in former times, the towns of Sitae, Zephyrium, Acre, Nymphaeum, and Dia. Panticapeum, a city of the Milesians, by far the strongest of them all, is still in existence. It lies at the entrance of the Bosporus, and is distant from Theodosia eighty-seven miles and a half, and from the town of Samarium, which lies on the other side of the strait, as we have previously stated, two miles and a half. Such is the width here of the channel which separates Asia from Europe, and which, too, from being generally quite frozen over, allows of a passage on foot. The width of the Cimmerian Bosporus is twelve miles and a half. It contains the towns of Hermisium, Myrmesium, and in the interior of it the island of Alapaci. From the spot called Tafre, at the extremity of the isthmus, to the mouth of the Bosporus, along the line of Lake Maeotis, is a distance of 260 miles. Leaving Tafre and going along the mainland, we find in the interior the Aukite, in whose country the Hypanis has its rise, as also the Noro, in whose district the Borysthenes has its source, the Geloni, the Thysigete, the Budini, the Basilidae, and the Agathyrsi, with their azure-colored hair. Above them are the Nomades, and then a nation of anthropophagi, or cannibals. On leaving Lake Bugis, above the Lake Maeotis, we come to Saramate and the Asodonis. Along the coast, as far as the river Tanais, are the Maeote, from whom the lake derives its name, and the last of all, in the rear of them, the Aramaspi. We then come to the Riphaean Mountains, and the region known by the name of Terraphoros, because of the perpetual fall of snow there the flakes of which resemble feathers. A part of the world which has been condemned by the decree of nature to lie immersed in thick darkness, suited for nothing but the generation of cold, and to be the asylum of the chilling blasts of the northern winds. Behind these mountains, and beyond the region of the northern winds, there dwells, if we choose to believe it, a happy race known as the Hyperborei, a race that lives to an extreme old age, and which has been the subject of many marvellous stories. At this spot are supposed to be the hinges upon which the world revolves, and the extreme limits of the revolutions of the stars. Here we find light for six months together, given by the sun in one continuous day, who does not, however, as some ignorant persons have asserted, conceal himself from the vernal equinox to autumn. On the contrary, to these people there is but one rising of the sun for the year, and that at the summer solstice, and but one setting at the winter solstice. This region, warmed by the rays of the sun, is of a most delightful temperature, and exempt from every noxious blast. The abodes of the natives are the woods and groves. The gods receive their worship singly and in groups, while all discord and every kind of sickness are things utterly unknown. Death comes upon them only when satiated with life. After a career of feasting, in an old age sated with every luxury, they leap from a certain rock there into the sea, and this they deem the most desirable mode of ending existence. Some writers have placed these people not in Europe, but at the very verge of the shores of Asia, because we find there a people called the Atakori, who greatly resemble them, and occupy a very similar locality. Other writers, again, have placed them midway between the two suns, at the spot where it sets to the antipodes, and rises to us. A thing, however, that cannot possibly be, in consequence of the vast tract of sea which there intervenes. Those writers who place them nowhere but under a day which lasts for six months, state that in the morning they sow, at midday they reap, at sunset they gather in the fruits of the trees, and during the night conceal themselves in caves. Nor are we at liberty to entertain any doubts as to the existence of this race. So many authors are there who assert that they were in the habit of sending their first fruits to Delos to present them to Apollo, whom in especial they worship. 
virgins used to carry them, who for many years were held in high veneration, and received the rites of hospitality from the nations that lay on the route, until at last, in consequence of repeated violations of good faith, the Hyperboreans came to the determination to deposit these offerings upon the frontiers of the people who adjoined them, and they, in their turn, were to convey them on to their neighbors, and so from one to the other, till they should have arrived at Delos. However, this custom even, in time, fell into disuse. The length of Sarmatia, Scythia, and Taurica, and of the whole of the region which extends from the river Borosthenes, is, according to Agrippa, 980 miles, and its breadth 717. I am of opinion, however, that in this part of the earth all estimates of measurement are exceedingly doubtful. Chapter 27 The Islands of the Euxine The Islands of the Northern Ocean But now, in conformity with the plan which I originally proposed, the remaining portions of this gulf must be described. As for its seas, we have already made mention of them. The Hellespont has no islands belonging to Europe that are worthy of mention. In the Euxine there are, at a distance of a mile and a half from the European shore, and of fourteen from the mouth of the strait, the two Cyanean islands, by some called the Simple Gades, and stated in fabulous story to have run the one against the other, the reason being the circumstance that they are separated by so short an interval that while to those who enter the Euxine opposite to them they appear to be two distinct islands, but if viewed in a somewhat oblique direction, they have the appearance of becoming gradually united into one. On this side of the Ister there is the single island of the Apolloniates, eighty miles from the Thracian Bosporus. It was from this place that Master Lucullus brought the Capitoline Apollo. Those islands which are to be found between the mouths of the Ister we have already mentioned. Before the Borysthenes is Achillea previously referred to, known also by the names of Luce and Macaron. Researches which have been made at the present day place this island at a distance of 140 miles from the Borysthenes, of 120 from Tyra, and of 50 from the island of Puse. It is about 10 miles in circumference. The remaining islands in the Gulf of Carcinitas are Cephalonesos, Rosfodusa, and Macra. Before we leave the Euxine we must not omit to notice the opinion expressed by many writers that all the interior seas take their rise in this one as the principal source, and not at the Strait of Gades. The reason they give for this supposition is not an improbable one, the fact that the tide is always running out of the Euxine and that there is never any ebb. We must now leave the Euxine to describe the outer portions of Europe. After passing the Raphaean Mountains, we have now to follow the shores of the northern ocean on the left until we arrive at Gades. In this direction a great number of islands are said to exist that have no name, among which there is one which lies opposite to Scythia, mentioned under the name of Raunonia, and said to be at a distance of the day's sail from the mainland, and upon which, according to Timaeus, amber is thrown up by the waves in the spring season. As to the remaining parts of these shores, they are only known from reports of doubtful authority. With reference to the septentrional or northern ocean, Hecateus calls it, after we have passed the mouth of the river Paraponesus, where it washes the Scythian shores, the Almachian Sea, the word Almachian signifying in the language of those races, frozen. Philemon again says that it is called Mori Marusa, or the Dead Sea, by the Cimbri as far as the promontory of Rubeus, beyond which it has the name of the Cronian Sea. Xenophon of Lampsacus tells us that at a distance of three days' sail from the shores of Scythia there is an island of immense size called Baltia, which by Pythias is called Basilia. Some islands called Oone are said to be here, the inhabitants of which live on the eggs of birds and oats and others again upon which human beings are produced with the feet of horses, thence called hippopodes. Some other islands are also mentioned as those of the Panotia, the people of which have ears of such extraordinary size as to cover the rest of the body, which is otherwise left naked. Leaving these, however, we come to the nation of the Ingevones, the first in Germany at which we begin to have some information upon which more implicit reliance can be placed. 
In their country is an immense mountain range called Sevo, not less than those of the Rifean range, and which forms an immense gulf along the shore as far as the promontory of the Cimbri. This gulf, which has the name of the Codanian, is filled with islands, the most famous among which is Scandinavia, of a magnitude as yet unascertained. The only portion of it at all known is inhabited by the nation of the Hiliviones, who dwell in five hundred villages, and call it a second world. It is generally supposed that the island of Eningia is of not less magnitude. Some writers state that these regions, as far as the river Vistula, are inhabited by the Sarmati, the Veneti, the Siri, and the Hiri, and that there is a gulf there known by the name of Silipenus, at the mouth of which is the island of Latris, after which comes another gulf, that of Lagnus, which borders on the Cimbri. The Cimbrian promontory, running out into the sea for a great distance, forms a peninsula which bears the name of Cartris. Passing this coast there are three and twenty islands which have been made known by the Roman arms, the most famous of which is Borcana, called by our people Fabaria, from the resemblance borne by a fruit which grows there spontaneously. There are those also called Glazaria by our soldiers, from their amber, but by the barbarians they are known as Osteravia and Actania. CHAPTER Twenty Eight, GERMANY The whole of the shores of this sea, as far as the Scaldus, a river of Germany, is inhabited by nations, the dimensions of whose respective territories it is quite impossible to state, so immensely do the authors differ, who have touched upon this subject. The Greek writers and some of our own countrymen have stated the coast of Germany to be 2,500 miles in extent, while Agrippa, comprising Raetia and Noricum in his estimate, makes the length to be 686 miles and the breadth 148. The breadth of Raetia alone, however, very nearly exceeds that number of miles, and indeed we ought to state that it was only subjugated at about the period of the death of that general while as for Germany, the whole of it was not thoroughly known to us for many years after his time. If I may be allowed to form a conjecture, the margin of the coast will be found to be not far short of the estimate of the Greek writers, while the distance in a straight line will nearly correspond with that mentioned by Agrippa. There are five German races, the Vandili, parts of whom are the Burgundiones, the Varini, the Carini, and the Gutones, the Ingevenes, forming a second race, a portion of whom are the Cimbri, the Totoni, and the tribes of the Chassi. The Istivones, who join up to the Rhine, and to whom the Cimbri belong, are the third race, while the Hermiones, forming a fourth, dwell in the interior, and include the Suevi, the Hermondori, the Chatti, and the Cheruski. The fifth race is that of the Pusini, who are also the Basterne, adjoining the Daci previously mentioned. The more famous rivers that flow into the ocean are the Gutalus, the Vistulus or Vistula, the Albus, the Visurgis, the Amisius, the Rhine, and the Mosa. In the interior is the long extent of the Hercynian range, which in grandeur is inferior to none. Chapter 29 Ninety-six Islands of the Gallic Ocean in the Rhine itself, nearly one hundred miles in length, is the most famous island of the Batavi and the Canonefates, as also other islands of the Frisi, the Chausi, the Frisibones, the Sturi, and the Moraski, which lie between Helium and Flavum. These are the names of the mouths into which the Rhine divides itself, discharging its waters on the north into the lakes there, and on the west into the river Mosa. At the middle mouth which lies between these two, the river, having but a very small channel, preserves its own name. CHAPTER Thirty, BRITANNIA Opposite to this coast is the island called Britannia, so celebrated in the records of Greece and of our own country. It is situate to the northwest, and with a large tract of intervening sea, lies opposite to Germany, Gaul, and Spain, by far the greater part of Europe. Its former name was Albion, but at a later period all the islands, of which we shall now just briefly make mention, were included under the name of Britanniae. This island is distinct from Gesoriacum, on the coast of the nation of the Morini, at the spot where the passage across is the shortest, fifty miles. 
Pythaeus and Isidorus say that its circumference is 4,875 miles. It is barely thirty years since any extensive knowledge of it was gained by the successes of the Roman arms, and even as yet they have not penetrated beyond the vicinity of the Caledonian forest. Agrippa believes its length to be 800 miles, and its breadth 300. He also thinks that the breadth of Hibernia is the same, but that its length is less by 200 miles. This last island is situate beyond Britannia, the passage across being the shortest from the territory of the Silores, a distance of thirty miles. Of the remaining islands, none is said to have a greater circumference than 125 miles. Among these there are the Arcades, forty in number, and situate within a short distance of each other, the seven islands Acamode, the Hebudes, thirty in number, and between Hibernia and Britannia, the islands of Mona, Monapia, Ricina, Vectus, Limnus, and Andros. Below it are the islands called Samnus and Axantos, and opposite, scattered in the German sea, are those known as the Glaseriae, but which the Greeks have more recently called the Electrides, from the circumstance of their producing electrum or amber. The most remote of all that we find mentioned is Thule, in which, as we have previously stated, there is no night at the summer solstice, when the sun is passing through the sign of cancer, while on the other hand at the winter solstice there is no day. Some writers are of opinion that this state of things lasts for six whole months together. Timaeus the historian says that an island called Mictus is within six days' sail of Britannia, in which white lead is found, and that the Britons sail over to it in boats of osier, covered with sewed hides. There are writers also who make mention of some other islands, Scandia namely, Dumna, Bergos, and greater than all, Nerigos, from which persons embark for Thule. At one day's sail from Thule is the frozen ocean, which by some is called the Cronian Sea. End of section 26「Section 27 of the Natural History, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Natural History, Volume 1, by Pliny the Elder. Translated by John Bostock and Henry Thomas Riley. Section 27. Chapter 31. Gallia Belgica. The whole of Gaul, that is comprehended under the one general name of Comata, is divided into three races of people, which are more especially kept distinct from each other by the following rivers. From the Scaldus to the Sequana it is Belgic Gaul, from the Sequana to the Garumna it is Celtic Gaul, or Lugdunensis, and from the Garumna to the promontory of the Pyrenean Range it is Aquitanian Gaul, formerly called Aramorica. Agrippa makes the entire length of the coast of Gaul to be 1,800 miles, measured from the Rhine to the Pyrenees, and its length from the ocean to the mountains of Gabena and Jura. Excluding therefrom Gallia Narbonensis, he computes at 420 miles, the breadth being 318. Beginning at the Scaldus, the parts beyond are inhabited by the Toxandri, who are divided into various people, with many names, after whom come the Menapi, the Morini, the Oromarsaki, who are adjacent to the Berg, which is known as Gesioracum, the Britanni, the Ambiani, the Belavazzi, the Hasi, and more in the interior, the Catuslugi, the Atrabates, the Nervi, a free people, the Feromondui, the Sueoconi, the Suesiones, a free people, the Ulmanetes, a free people, the Tungri, the Senusi, the Frisiabones, the Batazi, the Luci, a free people, the Treveri, who were formerly free, and the Lingones, a federal state, the federal Remi, the Mediomatrizi, the Sequani, the Raurizi, and the Helveti. The Roman colonies are Equestris and Wariaca. The nations of Germany which dwell in this province near the sources of the Rhine are the Nemetes, the Tribozzi, and the Vangiones. Nearer again, the Ubi, the colony of Agrippina, the Cugerni, the Batavi, and the peoples whom we have already mentioned as dwelling on the islands of the Rhine. 
Chapter 32 Gallia Lugdunensis That part of Gaul which is known as Lugdunensis contains the Lexavi, the Velocasis, the Galeti, the Veneti, the Abrincatui, the Osismi, and the celebrated river Ligaris, as also a most remarkable peninsula which extends into the ocean at the extremity of the territory of the Osismi, the circumference of which is 625 miles, and its breadth at the neck 125. Beyond this are the Nanetes, and in the interior are the Edui, a federal people, the Carnuti, a federal people, the Boi, the Senones, the Olerci, both those surnamed Eburavices and those called Senomani, the Meldi, a free people, the Parisi, the Tricases, the Andecavi, the Viducases, the Bodiocases, the Vanelli, the Cariosvelites, the Diablinti, the Redones, the Torones, the Atsui, and the Sequizani, a free people in whose territory is the colony of Lugdunum. Chapter 33 Gallia Aquitanica. In Aquitanica are the Ambulatri, the Anagnutes, the Pictones, the Santoni, a free people, the Bitoriges, surnamed Vivisci, the Aquitani, from whom the province derives its name, the Sedeboviatis, the Convene, who together form one town, the Begeri, the Tarbelli Quatuor Signani, the Cocosates Sexignani, the Venami, the Onobrisates, the Belendi, and then the Pyrenean range. Below these are the Monesi, the Osidates, a mountain race, the Sibilates, the Camponi, the Bercorcates, the Pindeduni, the Lassuni, the Velates, the Tornates, the Consorani, the Ausci, the Elusates, the Sotiates, the Osidates Campestres, the Sucases, the Tarusates, the Basabocates, the Vasai, the Senates, and the Campbellectri Agasenates. Joining up to the Pictones are the Bituriges, a free people who are also known as the Cubi, and then the Limovices, the Averni, a free people, and the Gabales. Again, adjoining the province of Narbonensis are the Ruteni, the Cadorsi, the Nitiobriges, and the Petrocori, separated by the river Tarnus from the Tolosani. The seas around the coast are the northern ocean flowing up to the mouth of the Rhine, the Britannic Ocean between the Rhine and the Sequana, and between it and the Pyrenees the Gallic Ocean. There are many islands belonging to the Veneti, which bear the name of Venetica, as also in the Aquitanic Gulf, that of Uliaris. Chapter 34. Nearer Spain, its coast along the Gallic Ocean. At the promontory of the Pyrenees, Spain begins, more narrow not only than Gaul, but even than itself in its other parts, as we have previously mentioned, seeing to what an immense extent it is here hemmed in by the ocean on one side and by the Iberian Sea on the other. A chain of the Pyrenees extending from due east to southwest divides Spain into two parts, the smaller one to the north, the larger to the south. The first coast that presents itself is that of the nearer Spain, otherwise called Terraconensis. On leaving the Pyrenees and proceeding along the coast, we meet with the forest ranges of the Vascones, Olarso, the towns of the Varduli, the Moroski, Menosca, Vesperius, and the port of Amanus, where now stands the colony of Flavio Briga. We then come to the district of the nine states of the Cantabri, the river Sauga, and the port of Victoria of the Iulia Brigensis, from which place the sources of the Iberus are distant forty miles. We next come to the port of Blendium, the Organomeschi, a people of the Cantabri, Varia Sueca, their port, the country of the Astores, the town of Noega, and on a peninsula, the Paisizzi. Next to these we have, belonging to the jurisdiction of Lucus, after passing the river Navi Lubio, the Sibarsi, the Egovari, surnamed Namarini, the Iadoni, the Erotrebe, the Celtic promontory, the rivers Florius and Nello, the Celtici, surnamed Neri, and above them the Tamarisi, in whose peninsula are the three altars called Sestiane, and dedicated to Augustus, the Capori, the town of Noella, the Celtici, surnamed Pressamarsi, and the Seleni. Of the islands, those worthy of mention are Corticata and Aunios. 
After passing the Seleni, belonging to the jurisdiction of the Bricari, we have the Helleni, the Gravi, and the fortress of Tide, all of them deriving their origin from the Greeks. Also the islands called Sike, the famous city of Aborica, the river Minius, four miles wide at its mouth, the Loini, the Suorbi, and Augusta, a town of the Bracari, above whom lies Galatia. We then come to the river Limia and the river Dorius, one of the largest in Spain, and which rises in the district of the Pelindones, passes near Numancia, and through the Aravesi and the Vacaei, dividing the Vetones from Asturia, the Galaci from Lusitania, and separating the Torduli from the Bracari. The whole of the region here mentioned from the Pyrenees is full of mines of gold, silver, iron, and lead, both black and white. Chapter 35. Lusitania. After passing the Dorius, Lusitania begins. We here have the ancient Torduli, the Pezuri, the river Vaga, the town of Talabrica, the town and river of Aminium, the towns of Conimbrica, Colipo, and Eburobritium. A promontory then advances into the sea in the shape of a large horn. By some it has been called Artabrum, by others the Great Promontory, while many call it the Promontory of Olisipo, from the city near it. This spot forms a dividing line in the land, the sea, and the heavens. Here ends one side of Spain, and when we have doubled the promontory the front of Spain begins. On one side of it lie the North and the Gallic Ocean, on the other the West and the Atlantic. The length of this promontory has been estimated by some persons at sixty miles, by others at ninety. A considerable number of writers estimate the distance from this spot to the Pyrenees at twelve hundred fifty miles, and committing a manifest error, place here the nation of the Artabri, a nation that never was here. For, making a slight change in the name, they have placed at this spot the Aratrebe, whom we have previously spoken of as dwelling in front of the Celtic promontory. Mistakes have also been made as to the more celebrated rivers. From the Minius, which we have previously mentioned, according to Varro, the river Emenius is distant two hundred miles, which others supposed to be situate elsewhere, and called Limea. By the ancients it was called the River of Oblivion, and it has been made the subject of many fabulous stories. At a distance of two hundred miles from the Dorius is the Tagus, the Munda lying between them. The Tagus is famous for its golden sands. At a distance of 160 miles from it is the sacred promontory, projecting from nearly the very middle of the front of Spain. From this spot to the middle of the Pyrenees, Varro says, is a distance of 1,400 miles, while to the Anas, by which we have mentioned Lusitania as being separated from Betica, is 126 miles, it being 102 more to Gades. The peoples are the Celtici, the Torduli, and about the Tagus, the Vetones. From the river Anas to the sacred promontory are the Lusitani. The cities worthy of mention on the coast, beginning from the Tagos, are that of Olisipu, famous for its mares, which conceive from the west wind, Salacia, which is surnamed the imperial city, Merubrica, and then the sacred promontory, with the other known by the name of Cuneus, and the towns of Osanoba, Balsa, and Murtili. The whole of this province is divided into three jurisdictions, those of Emerita, Pax, and Scalabis. It contains in all forty-six peoples, among whom there are five colonies, one municipal town of Roman citizens, three with the ancient Latin rites, and thirty-six that are tributaries. The colonies are those of Augusta Emerita, situate on the river Anas, Metallinum, Pax, and Norba, surnamed Caesariana. To this last place of jurisdiction the people of the Castra Servilia and Castra Cecilia resort. The fifth jurisdiction is that of Scalabis, which also has the name of Presidium Iulium. Olisipo, surnamed Felicitas Iulia, is a municipal city whose inhabitants enjoy the rights of Roman citizens. The towns in the enjoyment of the ancient Latin rites are Ebora, which also has the name of Liberalitas Iulia, and Myrtili and Salacia which we have previously mentioned. Those among the tributaries whom it may not be amiss to mention, in addition to those already alluded to among the names of those in Betica, are the Augustabrigensis, the Amiensis, the Aranditani, the Arabrisenses, the Balsenes, the Cesaro Brisenses, the Caparenses, 
the Caurenses, the Colarni, the Sibilitani, the Concordienses, the Elbocori, the Interaniensis, the Lanciensis, the Mirobrigensis, surnamed Celtici, the Medubrigensis, surnamed Plumbari, the Ocelensis or Lanciensis, the Torduli, also called Barduli, and the Tapori. Agrippa states that Lusitania, with Astoria and Galatia, is 540 miles in length and 536 in breadth. The provinces of Spain, measured from the two extreme promontories of the Pyrenees, along the sea line of the entire coast, are thought to be 3,922 miles in circumference, while some writers make them to be but 2,600. Chapter 36 The Islands in the Atlantic Ocean Opposite to Celtiberia, are a number of islands, by the Greeks called Cassiterides, in consequence of their abounding in tin. And facing the promontory of the Aratrebe are the six islands of the gods, which some persons have called the Fortunate Islands. At the very commencement of Betica, and twenty-five miles from the mouth of the Straits of Gades, is the island of Gadis, twelve miles long and three broad, as Polybius states in his writing. At its nearest part it is less than seven hundred feet distance from the mainland, while in the remaining portion it is distant more than seven miles. Its circuit is fifteen miles, and it has on it a city which enjoys the rights of Roman citizens, and whose people are called the Augustani, of the city of Iulia Gaditana. On the side which looks towards Spain, at about one hundred paces distance, is another long island, three miles wide, on which the original city of Gades stood. By Ephorus and Philistides it is called Erythia, by Timaeus and Silenus Aphrodisias, and by the natives the Isle of Juno. Timaeus says that the larger island used to be called Cotinusa, from the olives. The Romans call it Tartessos, the Carthaginians Gadir, that word in the Punic language signifying a hedge. It was called Erythia because the Tyrians, the original ancestors of the Carthaginians, were said to have come from the Erythrian or a Red Sea. In this island Geryon is by some thought to have dwelt, whose herds were carried off by Hercules. Other persons again think that his island is another one, opposite to Lusitania, and that it was there formerly called by that name. CHAPTER Thirty Seven: THE GENERAL MEASUREMENT OF EUROPE Having thus made the circuit of Europe, we must now give the complete measurement of it, in order that those who wish to be acquainted with this subject may not feel themselves at a loss. Artemidorus and Isidorus have given its length from the Tanais to Gades as 8,214 miles. Polybius in his writings has stated the breadth of Europe, in a line from Italy to the ocean, to be 1,150 miles. But even in his day, its magnitude was but little known. The distance of Italy, as we have previously stated, as far as the Alps, is 1120 miles, from which, through Lugdunum to the British port of the Marini, the direction which Polybius seems to follow, is 1168 miles. But the better ascertained, though greater length, is that taken from the Alps through the camp of the legions in Germany, in a northwesterly direction to the mouth of the Rhine, being 1543 miles. We shall now have to speak of Africa and Asia. Summary Towns and nations mentioned, noted rivers, famous mountains, islands, people or towns no longer in existence, remarkable events, narratives, and observations. Roman authors quoted Cato the Censor, Master Vero, Master Agrippa, the late Emperor Augustus, Vero Atacinus, Cornelius Nepos, Hyginus, L. Vetus, Mela Pomponius, Licinius Musianus, Fabricius Tuscus, Ateus Capito, Ateus the Philologist. Foreign authors quoted Polybius, Hecateus, Hellanicus, Demastus, Eudoxus, Dicearchus, Timosthenes, Eratosthenes, Ephorus, Crates the Grammarian, Serapion of Antioch, Callimachus, Artemidorus, Apollodorus, Agathocles, Eumachus, Timaeus the Sicilian, Mersilus, Alexander Polyhistor, Thucydides, Dosiades, 
Anaximander, Philistides Malotes, Dionysius, Aristides, Calidemus, Menecmus, Aglaosthenes, Anticlides, Heraclides, Philemon, Xenophon, Pythias, Isidorus, Philonides, Xenagoras, Astinomus, Staphylus, Aristocritus, Metrodorus, Cleobulus, Posidonius. End of section 27